only way to save our planet is to become more materialistic. We need to learn to love our stuff. We need to learn to cherish it, to care for it, to repair it, to maintain it. And when we don't need it anymore, we need to help it find a new home. The only way that eight billion people are gonna be able to share this one little planet of ours is if we learn to love our stuff. But we're actually trained to love wasting things. We're actually taught from an early age that it's not just okay to throw away perfectly good things, but that to do so and to buy new things to replace the perfectly good old things is good for the economy. How ridiculous. We've been told that, that, that throwing away perfectly good shoes and perfectly good shirts is a good way to create jobs for people that make shirts and shoes that we don't need. This is as economically absurd as it is historically new. Economics is supposed to be about efficiency. Yet for the past couple of decades, we've been told that waste, that waste is a good way to create wealth. So what's going on? How has our public debate been turned upside down like this? Well, my answer is surprisingly simple. We're using the wrong words. The words consumerism and materialism are usually used interchangeably. But in fact, they mean the exact opposite. Consumerism refers to the love of buying things, the thrill of the new. But materialism refers to the love of the object itself. Materialism tells us to love our things. But if we loved our things, the thought of throwing them away would cause us pain, not joy. Take puppies, for example. <laughs> imagine, imagine you were buying a new puppy. Think about the joy of buying a new puppy. Think about the thrill of taking the new puppy home. Think about how much effort you put into choosing the right puppy for you. Now imagine a year after how you'd feel when someone invents a newer, cuter designer puppy. Would you throw your puppy away? Or would you love it? Would you cherish it? Would you want to keep it for as long as you can? Now, I know what you're thinking. Our economy is built on the need to throw away perfectly good things. Our economy is built on the idea that replacing old things with newer, cuter models is good for the economy. That's how we create jobs. That's how we make our economy grow. And that's my dog, Scout. <laughs> So how did we get ourselves into this mess? And how do we get ourselves out of it? Well, for me, the idea that when we love something, we keep it, doesn't just extend to puppies. It extends to any of the things that have meaning to us that we love. But we've been trained. We've been trained for years, perhaps for our whole life, to think that throwing things away is actually a way to make ourselves happy. It makes room to replace those things with new, cooler, cuter models. The idea, the idea that we should spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need, to impress people we don't know, is often known as affluenza. And it's a brand new idea. In the 7,000 years of recorded history, it's really only in the past couple of decades that people believe that making things and throwing them out, even when they work perfectly well, is a sensible idea. And because it's a new idea, it doesn't mean we have to keep it forever. It's up to us, it's our culture that decides which ideas make sense and which ideas don't. Now, it can be hard for people to see just how weird some of our ideas are. Just as a fish finds it hard to taste the salt water that it swims in, we find it hard to detect the impact of our culture of affluenza on our own decision making. So let me give you a thought experiment. If throwing out last season's clothes or last season's phone and replacing it with a new one is good for the economy, then it must follow that throwing out last season's puppy is good for the economy too. Imagine if, 
our culture told us that when a puppy turned one, we should kill it and replace it with a cuter, cooler, new one. Imagine all of the economic activity we would create in the puppy sector. <laughs> now I know some of you might find it abhorrent to kill your puppy, but that's okay. Maybe you could pay someone to do it for you. <laughs> then we could create more jobs as well. If the idea of disposing of a puppy when a new acuter model comes along is abhorrent, then how is that any different from the idea that disposing of a phone or a pair of shoes or a lounge suite is any different? Now, I know you're sitting there thinking, how on earth did we get from talking about materialism to killing puppets? <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you can see that this is the culture that we've created. If we loved things, if we cherished things, if we were genuinely materialistic, then the idea of disposing of those things because a new acuter model came along would cause us pain, not joy. But of course, just as the fish struggles to taste the salt water, we struggle to see the impact that our culture has on what we think a sensible idea is. We struggle to understand why it is we do some things and not others. So let me give you another example. Let me give you the example of grass. The largest irrigated crop in America is lawn. Lawn. More land is dedicated to the growing of lawn than any other irrigated crop. Now ask yourself, why do people grow lawn? Is it because lawn seed is cheap? Is it because lawn mowers are cheap? Or do people grow lawn because their parents grew lawn? And because their neighbours grew lawn? And because having a lawn is a nice way to fit in and behave like everyone else, just like chucking out last year's phone and just like chucking out last year's clothes. Our culture has an enormous impact on the decisions we make. Imagine if our culture told us that growing vegetables in our backyard was a good idea. Imagine if our culture told us that growing lawn, harvesting a crop every weekend, and then tipping the crop in the garbage bin every weekend was a weird idea. Now, I know no one here would do anything as weird as harvest a crop of lawn and then tip it straight in the bin. But I'm a bit worried about the person sitting next to you. <laughs> so, let's back up. We have an influence over our culture. We have an influence over what's normal, what's weird, and what's great. And if we collectively decided to spend less of our money on stuff and more of our money on services and get some of our things repaired and grew some of our own food, we wouldn't harm the economy. We would change the shape of our economy. We would change the shape of our economy in such a way that by buying more services and less stuff, we would actually create more jobs, not less. We would have less impact on the natural environment, not more. And we'd probably have more fun than spending all that money on the stuff that we never used. We have the ability to shape this culture if we want to. It is up to us to decide how to reshape our economy. And in doing so, we need to understand that it's not complicated. We do it all the time. I grew up in a household where not once in my childhood did I go out for breakfast. Not once. But today, cafes are amongst the biggest employers in our economy. Imagine if all the money we spent on bottled water was spent on locally produced food. Imagine if all the money we spend on kitchen renovations and appliances was spent on restaurant meals. Imagine if all the money that we spent on big cars to impress our neighbours was spent on big solar panels to impress our neighbours. <laughs> every time we spend money, we reshape our economy. And every time we do so publicly, we actually change culture as well. We change what's normal and we change what's weird. So if I've convinced you that killing a puppy is a bad idea, 
And if I've convinced you that chucking away perfectly useful stuff to replace it with newer, cuter, cooler stuff is a bad idea, well, what can you do differently? Well, one, never forget that every time you spend money, you help to reshape the economy. If you buy more of the things you want more of and less of the things we want less of, we will change the shape of the economy. Second, it's not just your money that counts, it's your votes that count. A lot of the money that we spend is spent collectively. If we want to live in a society that spends more money on health or education or renewable energy, we need to vote for people that want to spend more money on those things. If we want to live in a society that spends less money on health or education or renewable energy, then we need to vote for people that are spending less money on those things. And finally, next time somebody tells you that we need to waste time, waste resources and waste money buying things we don't need to make the economy strong, understand that by that logic, by that logic, we should kill our puppies and get cuter ones every year. But let's not kill our puppies. Let's learn to love our stuff instead and kill the culture of affluenza. Thank you very much.